right now in First Class. When it comes to London, you want to stay high-end, and it doesn't get much higher than Her Majesty. Kate and the Milton family stayed right here. Oh my guys just whoosh, kept it up. And then... If you're looking to splash your cash in London, you be pushed to make a much bigger wave than with one of these. It's about performance. Eddie Jordan and Lewis uh, Hamilton is a big advocate. And later on... Susan, hi. Welcome to North Capri Court. I'd like you to come and meet a friend of mine, Tony. Well, I've never shot anything before. Pull. Ah! Miss Lee, we've 20 minutes to landing. London, the UK's playground of wealth and aristocracy. Steeped in heritage and tradition, nobody does luxury like the Brits do. This is the Ritz London, one of the most famous and the poshest hotels around. It's been open since 1906, so it makes it one of the city's oldest hotels, and everyone has stayed here, from Churchill to Chaplin to Eisenhower, and it's even stayed open during both world wars. When it was first opened, the Ritz was panned for its French-like opulence, but these days, this hotel is making no apologies for pure, unadulterated bling. Who has stayed here at this opulent suite? Uh, from uh, the royal family uh, to uh, politicians, uh, prime ministers, actors, actresses, and lots of wealthy from all over the world, Americans. Russians, we get all sorts. Pavlova, the Russian prima ballerina, danced in the hotel. The Aga Khan and Paul Getty had suites. Charlie Chaplin even required 40 policemen to escort him through his fans into the hotel in 1921. Michael can't talk too recently, but it, it's no secret that the Rolling Stones spent a lot of time here. What do you think is the hardest task and request you've ever had to fulfill? Hardest? The hardest? Mm -hmm. Or the most um, interesting? Uh, interesting is buy a battleship. Sorry, what? Yeah, how do you buy a battleship? No, well, it's uh, with great difficulties because <laughs> you have to have this armed and make sure that you get a clearance. Some of the most infamous political decisions have been made right here. Winston Churchill, Charles de Gaulle, and Eisenhower met for summit meetings during the Second World War. And think that this room in the hotel's largest suite is just a closet? Think again. 300 years ago, the third Prime Minister of the UK, Henry Pillum, lived here in this suite. And he would bring in his closest advisors during that time. They would discuss the policies and the issues of the day, and that became known as the Prime Minister's Cabinet, which we know is routine and a tradition that now spans the globe. This what? is the quintessential British experience, the afternoon tea. Tea at the Ritz costs around $75, but it seems like that's a cost a lot of people are okay to stomach. Average wait times are around one month. So enjoying your afternoon tea. You know, to drink your tea, you actually don't need to hold out your pinky because that's only reserved for the royals. That's your tip of the day. But what if you want a hotel fit for a queen? Well, this is it. The Goring's been called one of the hardest hotels to crack in all of London. The Goring was a hotel that Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, and her family stayed in for the royal wedding. Why don't I push the door open and let you go in first? Okay, the royal suite. Wow. Two bedrooms, three reception areas. Kate and the Middleton family stayed right here. Tell me about the atmosphere the night before this huge event. Well, for us, the occasion itself was obviously a massive thing, but in many ways it passed us by. We were in this tiny little building doing what we do, and if I'm honest, the easy bit was doing it. It's amazing. Nobody leaked a word. Not the doorman, not the well, receptionist. Yeah. <laughs> we had people spying on us, people asking our door staff stuff every day. Luckily, all my guys just whoosh, kept it buttoned. Kate Middleton about to marry the heir to the throne. Probably not much surprise to you. Well, not much, right? Let's take a look at the shower here at the Royal Suite. That is Queen Victoria in a shower for seven. Happy times. We couldn't do London without a reference to Bond, James Bond. And yes, that is MI6 headquarters right behind me. We're going to take you on a bit of a 007 adventure along the River Thames.
The River Thames has been the main artery for the city for centuries, and that means almost all of London's most significant buildings have been built more or less on the river itself. See all the main tourist sites right here, including the London Eye, Big Ben, as you know, and everything that London's famous for. The Thames experience begins at the city center and travels as far east as the banking district Canary Wharf and as far west as the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben, the Ministry of Defense, and of course, who can forget MI6? Military Intelligence Section 6 on your left. This is the building that Pierce Brosnan comes flying out of in the world is not enough. I would want to be a pussy galore, I think. Oh, and even though the firm receives special approval for getting right up close to MI6, be prepared to receive a little additional attention. What? And if you think this is just a sightseeing adventure, well, think again. At the end of the tour, there's just enough time for a little lighthearted Bond-inspired fun. Now, what UK adventure would be complete without a trip to the quintessential British countryside? And when the mega rich go rural, they travel in true British style. For centuries, the UK's inventory of colossal castles, or stately homes as they call them, were the reserve of, well, the people that ran the state. But these days, the massive maintenance costs have soared as the castles themselves have crumbled, meaning it's a little easier to slap a price tag on some unique British heritage. This is North Cadbury Court, a 700-year-old, 1,500-acre, five-star estate. Hi, Archie! It's owned by Archie Montgomery, and when they say a man's house is his castle, for Archie, this is the real deal. We were approached by the Rolling Stones manager, but sadly we're already booked. Well, after all that, if Mick Jagger couldn't get in, I, I really got to take a look at the Cadbury estate, don't I? I think you should, but I'm not sure you're appropriately dressed. And may I suggest we put out some family tweeds that might be more in order? Well, I'm sure it'll be much warmer for me. <laughs> We've got a little surprise for you now. Uh -huh. I'd like you to come and meet uh, a friend of mine, Tony who's an expert gun instructor and he's going to show you how to shoot clay pigeons here. Well, I've never shot anything before. Not a problem. Okay, so he says. Nice to meet you, Tony. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Shooting's been a big part of British tradition now for centuries and while hunting is outlawed in mainland Britain, this experience is a little less risque. All right, Tony, so how do we do this? Right. It always starts with a safety briefing. Uh huh. Safety first. Safety first. Shooting is no accident. That's one way to put it, yes. Next matter is you must always wear something to protect your ears. Yes. Okay. Ear defenders are yours. All right. And in this country, there's a mandatory eye oh. protection. That's right. Nobody wants to lose an eye. Nobody wants to lose an eye. No. Depending on what you're shooting, you may have to wear a cap. We don't need a cap today. It would ruin my hair. Are we ready? Yeah, I think. Pull. Oh, not a problem. Missed that one. Even experienced shooters can miss the clay on occasion, and if it looks easy, it isn't. Right. Two fingers above the barrel. Two fingers above the barrels. Oh, oh just oh. to the right of it. It really isn't. Pull. Oh. So with the sun setting on the British countryside and all the activities undertaken, if you guess the price of a weekend at this place at somewhere above 15 grand, you'd have hit the mark too. That does it for this edition of First Class. We had a jolly good time. Thanks for joining us.